Set. Yeah, be ready. Okay. Stop recording. Already started. Okay then. This is borderline relevant. Two. <laughs> Sorry. Ready. Action. This is Borderline Relevant, a podcast from the Borderline Tactical Network. And this episode is brought to you thanks to a cup of Darjeeling and a Malto Milk Biscuit. Hi, Mesh. And joining me today are Spanny. What is a Malto Milk Biscuit? Is it like those digestibles or what? I don't know. It's an Australian thing that I was told I had to try. Oh, any good? Oh. Uh, yeah, it is actually. Oh. Very dunkable, apparently. Oh, you remember. Uh, Paz. Oh, how do any I questions about biscuits? <laughs> I'll tell you later. Uh, Azza. <laughs> yeah, good day. And Kurt. Hello. And Kurt is now going to tell us a little bit about himself. I'm a Capricorn who, like, no, I don't like <laughs> more to beach, actually. Um, yeah, so I suppose I joined these, this Motley gang probably, what, two, three months ago, guys? Yeah, yeah around that. Something like that. Um, before then, I've been playing predominantly armor, actually, in different formats, whether it be. Uh, uh, you know, your epochs and your things like that with a group of friends and tried to get into the sort of more realistic based um, gameplay and these guys have been more than helpful dragging me into their world. And, and you're you not wouldn't leaving know it? Well, you wouldn't know it, but I'm probably one of the older guys in the group, but uh, that probably doesn't come through very well on the videos. <laughs> <laughs> nah, not from the maturity. <laughs> uh. the I'm pretty sure on the second video we had the profile of Kurt. Yeah, well, yeah. I actually want to explain that a little bit. I think I've copped the raw deal there. It, <laughs> the way I remember it, Apex said he shot a <laughs> Apex said he shot a goat in the ass, and then I just sort of, you know, may have taken it to another level. But well, you took responsibility for it. Therefore, it is now legend. Oh, it's a fantastic that. photo too. Yeah. Who say? So lifelike, actually. You wouldn't... Uncanny how much that looks like me. Yes. In fact, I have a replica here on my Facebook. I'll just link you to it. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's interesting that you said that one of the things that drew you towards our Motley crew is the sort of interest in doing something with a little bit more realism in it, because that's what I think we'll have a little bit of a natter about later. However, before we get to that, uh, borderline relevant, if you want to speak to us, and oh my god, apparently somebody did. Um, oh. There is an email that you can it address, happens. you can send to, which is borderlinerelevant at gmail.com, and I believe... Link in the description, that, email now, beat the rush. Yes. Um, we are saying hello to a certain Sigri, and I apologize... No, I don't apologize if I butchered your name. Sorry, I'm English and that's what we do. Um, from Norway. Hello. Hello. It's nice to know that somebody <laughs> who isn't just a lot listens. Guten um, Tag. Oh, God. Yeah, well done. Oh, well. <laughs> <laughs> Bye, Sigri. We'll see you later. <laughs> uh, if we uh, what was this? Uh, if we ever get a connection to the EU, which we can easily do because we've got such fantastic internet in Australia, um, love to have you on a server. We'd love to come. Um, we're assuming that Europe has more than one server, so send us another email with your address, and we'll join with a ping of over two thousand and uh, slow you all down. Oh, by the way, to say hello in Norwegian is hello with an A. Hello. That's hello. just being racist. <laughs> no, seriously, I googled it. Mm. Oh, this okay. is the effort that we go to for and, our followers. Yeah, hey, we've really researched this. H E I. Mm. Okay. Anyway. Fair enough. All right. Well, we do tackle the big issues here. I'm glad I came. Velkommen. No. Velkommen. I think it means welcome. Okay. Well, we've all learned something today. I think. Yes. Probably not. Um, next in the notes is that Azza shamelessly whores himself. Yes. So Azza, go for it. Yep. Uh, I, uh, I've started uh, recording videos for BTAC. It's, uh, it's been good because uh, Paz and Esh have been a bit slack lately. Um, and Azza's time is up. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> now, a bit of housekeeping. I've been so slack that I haven't posted up last podcast's video. So you're probably watching this one before you watch that one. So expect a small delay, but that won't matter. So two will come out on the same day. Just think of it as like a Christmas present. Sorry, just agree. And back to Azza because we've forgiven him. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, so if uh, you want to find my channel, it's uh, Azza276. Uh, if you can't find it from that, just put a 9 on the end of that. Um, that's the actual channel name, but yeah, you'll find it as under as Azza276. It's got uh, lots of great videos. I think you'll oh, actually you get go. a whole bunch of lists or links uh, to Azza's videos because he's the only one who's been able to record and post anything from the last or three tacks. Except for one. Except for one. Yes. 
So what have those been? I've been I've been really slack because I've been attempting to make money with my business and <laughs> thus haven't had the time to actually play games. Just so, okay. so what's happened? What have I missed out on? So from op- operator, I think we touched on the uh, in the last um, podcast. Uh, we've had op tri blast. Uh, that's the one I've missed only because my shadow play didn't want to play the game. Um, and not it did record, but uh, it was the video just didn't look great at all. So. Um, I've gone to uh, another screen capture, and I got up, up, I do up. This is where we uh, spectacularly failed. And I also um, started from a few um, years up of when of our actual uh, TTP training nights. Well, actually, I only got one up there now, but we could put up tonight's as well. Yeah, if it's worth it. Yeah. Yeah, the water one was good. Recording again. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I've certainly got a couple I haven't put together yet, including Devil One. I think it was it uh, Spanish mission with the submarine? Yeah, up operator. Up operator. Yep. Okay. Give me a uh, smoke pillar. <laughs> I fairly said I clicked smoke pillar there. <laughs> yep. It looked like it too. Actually, speaking of Ace and TTP, Ace has made uh, writing the TTPs a lot harder. <laughs> I actually have to know what I'm doing now. I can't just uh, read it. I just... Yeah, because I put so much effort into making those videos. <laughs> just, <laughs> ooh, did them on the day. But, but they're I think, very well put together, Paz, I must say. Uh, I think that uh, the next two or three TTPs, the specializing in ladder climbing with the uh, theory and tutorial, will be, will be very interesting. Well, that should be good, because that'll segue straight into medical as well. Yes. <laughs> Everything we do segues User straight into medical. Timed out. Oh, no. There goes oh. Spanny. Goodbye, Spanny. You know, Spanny got fiber optics because he moved house, but there he goes. Why we could potentially actually get onto the European servers. That's why we have five people on today. Yes. Anyway, <laughs> in, in the absence of Spanny, we shall move on um, and have a little bit of a chat about sort of, I suppose the argument is realism versus immersion. Because Ooh. let's let's face it, we play armor. And armor is known for being the, and I'm doing worst thing for radio, quotation marks with my fingers, uh, the realist game that you've got out there. A it's, mil sim. It's a mil course. sim, yes. Um, however, let's be brutally honest, there's realism and there's immersion, I think. And so I think Paz had access to some of the things that people often often request for realism that might start us off. You oh, got that? God, I need the GitHub back up. Oh. I like I troll the GitHubs with the amount of stuff. Well, while you do that, let's explain yeah. that Azza actually has some degree of real world experience. <laughs> um, yeah. Being our resident, I don't know what you grunt. No, no, I was um, in the core of Raimi, so I'm a fixer upper. I fixed. I was a, a radio tech, so I fixed radios uh, in the military. But um, I did get to go overseas with that. Um, so I don't have the pure sp- perspective of uh, uh, infantrymen, but um, in the army they say everyone's a soldier first. So I did do some of that military stuff. And right. um, yeah. All right, I'm going to you all the feature requests. So this goes from number one, which is sort flashbang under explosive grenade, not misc grenade. I don't know if that's immersion or realism. What if, what's the vote? <laughs> <laughs> sure. Then we got hide clock on map if there's no watch in your inventory. Uh, what else we got? You're Fair not enough. able to free look while jumping. Uh, Sorry. <laughs> uh, uh, is he saying that in his world you can't look around whilst jumping? Because I can do that. <laughs> yeah, I've done it a few times too. I, I'm going to test that, it now yeah. if you oh, want. Here's I also one. fall down a lot, so. Yeah. Here's, here's uh, a good one related. player breath visuals. So if it's cold, you can see your own breath. I like that one. That's yeah. a nice one. Um, hand signals enhancement. So you can wave. Uh, we've got the head bags. You can put a bag over someone's head. Oh, yeah. I like I that like one, that. Uh, Vehicle For the ladies, towing that and one. tilting. Um, spare parts. The tactical ladder at the moment can only be set upwards and not downwards. Is that immersion breaking or realism breaking? Realism. Ooh. Ooh. Vehicle refueling, vehicle rearming. I like that. Mark one eyeballs integration. That one sounds interesting. Really? 
Well, here's, here's a question, though. Like, how far can you go with this? Like, obviously, um, is probably one of the most, you know, simulated um, into the realistic realm. But, like, what, what, what is the limit? That's, that's if you ignore the zombies, but... Uh, yeah, well, yeah. <laughs> I've always wanted armour to have fishing in it. Where, like, you know, if you're not <laughs> off fighting a battle, you can just pull up by the beach and start fishing. But, no, like, for realism, I'd love three things. You have to, say, eat every three hours. You need to drink every hour. And you got to take a piss, say, like, every 30 minutes to, like, three hours. It's just random. And, like, if you don't do that, your stamina will decrease quite quickly. Oh, no, I think I'll just piss my pants. Yeah, well, yeah. sure. But, you know. <laughs> We're in the army now, remember? <laughs> yeah, that's right. Mm. If you're lying in ambush, you can't get up. Just piss your pants. I, don't know, they, I just think it'd be something nice to carry. They are called pongos for a reason. <laughs> I think, yeah, I, I think someone summed it up quite well when they pointed out that if, if you wanted realism, the way it would work is you'd buy the game, you'd play the game, and then when you were shot, you were either unable to play the game for three to six months while you were rehabilitated, or you were never allowed to play it again because you'd been killed. Oh, well, that's why we have practice ammunition, so we can <laughs> host uh, military war games without hurting each other. <laughs> yeah, um, now, there's, and there's um, also a feature request. <laughs> The armor is there's a lot of um. It is much realistic. It's more than Battlefield or Call of Duty or anything like that. It's not as arcadey, um, which is what I like about it. Uh, but but there has to be a fine line. There there is a line between realism and um, immersion and what how far you can go. Because if you have it too realistic, it's just not going to be fun. Uh, that's a, that is a fine line. So I'm just thinking like in Call of Duty, there's never a point where you get bored. In Battlefield, uh, could, the only could, time you get bored is when you're falling out of your jet and you got to walk back to the map and it takes you about, you know, like, five minutes of walking. <laughs> in armor, when you're ready for a 30-minute walk, you're not too bothered, like, you just start walking. Yeah. Because you're chatting to your mates. The only reason armor isn't boring is because you're playing with other people. If it was a single-player game, no way. I've played the single-player campaigns, they're alright, but... Yeah, like, it's, it's all action, it's never... You have multiplayer. Even in the single player part of it, it's there's very little non-action. There's always something yeah. that you're always doing something. Um, there's a few good single player mods out there. It's um, one uh, I play with uh, all I, I played a whole lot of Strata and that. But just but, with the um, MCC, so you can like fix the, the you know the campaign when it breaks. Yeah. Because I think three or four times the vehicle just decided to stop moving and the campaign would go to a standstill. Yeah, um, I've played a whole lot of Altus and a whole lot of uh, Stratus, and, and they're good single-player mods. They're, they're quite in-depth, um, give you a lot of lot of stuff to do, so... So is there anything... Here's, here's a great User point. Is there anything the in the game, and I can think of at least one thing, um, which has attempted to become too realistic and is now detracting from it? Ooh, that's a difficult one. Mm. I'm I'm thinking... That, you know, I've talked about those missions I'd like to make where we send in a recon team beforehand and they, they get 20, 25 minutes, whatever it is, to scope out landing zone or whatever. I'm now thinking if I want to do one where we set up proper base defense, I've got to send the guys in two to three days beforehand to build the sandbag wall. Oh, we tried that today, actually. Yeah. Ace allows you to play sandbags one by one. So, like, I don't know, maybe I'll include a picture of a sandbag wall and you can have a count. Even with 10 people putting down a sandbag, like, one at a time, oh, it's going to take you a little while. I don't know, pretty exciting gaming, though, really. But, like, with what you're saying, with, like, <laughs> that, um, you need to turn up 25 minutes early. The next tack I'm making, I'm going to get, like, Apex to scout the place out, like, a week in advance. So, obviously, like, when I build the mission, it'll have the markings of where stuff is as, like, sort of a general gist, and then Apex, if you can see it or not, from, like, you know, a K back with his sniper rifle can like pinpoint where stuff actually is or like enemy movements and things like that well that, that comes into realism in your game planning your mission yeah. making yeah plus it yeah. also means i don't need to write up the brief because apex will do it yeah it's just like another thing with the, with the sandbags uh you, you can't have it too realistic where you, you expect the troops for the first 30 minutes to an hour building a sandbag wall well, i can guarantee it takes longer than that in real life yeah. but it's it, it's not fun. That's why you have all these pre-planned bases and, and that set up. It's sort of fun for the first five minutes. 
<laughs> and, yeah, and yet, yeah. and yet, a certain notch made several billion or whatever it is out of exactly that game. Yeah. Well, one place I can see where the sandbag's working is if you are sitting up, maybe an ambush, and you just put a just a single sandbag in front of you to give you a bit more protection. Well, with the tra um, we did static training today as part of the Amasutra, and we found I think Pope put down a couple sandbags underneath the static to raise it up a bit. Mm. That worked out okay. Yeah, only yeah. problem was I end up started bouncing off the sandbag in yeah. full automatic fire yeah, and Maybe if like you that, set up so. a, a low static and put it mm. put some sandbags around the front of it to sort of protect the fire. Yeah, that, that sounds good. That, that's that's where I can see that the sandbag module well, being used more. I can see it coming into like if you want to talk realism and things like that in the mission making parameters. As in, you need to be you know putting sandbags around. And all of a sudden, you get attacked, and it's just like, oh, hang on, I'm doing one task and all of a sudden the the action breaks out kind of activity that sounds all right like yeah. it's just distracting speaking more to the realism but not realism immersion the radio system we use so we use task force radios which uh, have been doing really well for us like they do have they go crackly when you sort of go out of range but they don't really yeah. take landscape into account they do a little bit so like you got radios that range from 2Ks, 5Ks, and then I think 20Ks for the long ranges. Yep. And they sort of take, they get crackly as you get to those outer distances. However, there, there, there is a coefficient which can adjust that. Yeah. Whereas Acre 2 has, I don't know, they advertise as duplex waves. I have no idea what that is, so I'm sure Azza, you're a radio <laughs> person. Explain. Um, any way I can think of... Uh, so full duplex communication is uh, basically be able to talk while the other person's talking. So your normal radio um, that we know of every day yeah. um, is a simplex in a way. It, it can only transmit, you can't receive. So only, and only one person can really transmit at a time. Um, duplex is like, like um, what TFR does. If um, someone's talking, someone can just press the press and talk over and you can have two, two, three, four people talking at oh, the same okay. time. So you're like... That's not real realistic. Oh, so then you've got to switch to receiving and then switch to yeah, sending. Yeah, so, so pretty much like if... Uh, to be more realistic, that if um, once you press the press all, you shouldn't be able to hear anyone else over the radio. And if two people transmit at the same time, there should be interference between them. Oh, okay. Oh, because they're on the same frequency. They're on the same frequency, that's right. Uh, so with duplex, both people can talk and hear each other? Basically, yeah. With some interference or no interference? Um, if they're saying duplex, then it's pretty much full duplex, which is, um, yeah, they can just talk. It's like they're talking on different frequencies. Okay. But yeah, Acre 2 has that, as well as Acre 2 has a big coefficient for landscape interference. So unless you have direct line of sight, you don't get any communications with um, Acre 2 from what they've been saying. And a lot of the like realism groups, they sort of look at Acre 2 and then don't use it. It's it's good in the sense that it's really realistic, but it's bad in the sense that the game's fun because you, like, you're playing with other people. The moment the radios don't work, you have a really shit night. Well, that comes back to the real question. How much is too much realism? So, I mean, I wouldn't mind that. I think direct line of sight's fine, but... The amount of time somebody will come in late and we've got a radio to them or something like that. Like, we just... I guess we haven't really been thinking about taking the terrain into account when we look at radios. It's also our play style. We're a more casual... Yeah, that's a ...play style. Um, whereas, like, the realism groups just really love the realism. I think you have a lot more leeway with realism than you do with authenticity, though. Oh, right, and welcome back, Spanny. Yeah, sorry, my uh, net conked out for a oh, while. Oh, good. We the router around for a bit. All good now. But yeah, um, so something like radios, and you know, how realistic they are isn't so much of an issue for me as things get, I don't know how to properly explain it, but let's say you're probably waiting for resupply, you're asking permission to fire, like that sort of authenticity as opposed to realism seems uh, a bit too much, and I think that's where it kind of falls down. At least for me, that's not the experience I'm looking for when I play armor. Yeah. I think it breaks um, immersion when you're like, should we shoot at them? And somebody else is just opening up. 
Because you're thinking to yourself, like, we haven't identified them, the other person's just firing away, and then, like, the lead's kind of like, well, if he's firing, yeah, we might as well all fire. That's where it's kind of immersion-breaking for me. Yeah, well, that's that's definitely the case, I agree, but it sort of comes down to, you know, what you're doing as a server too, doesn't it? Like, is that the accepted practice, or, you know, you watch videos of different different groups out there, and they run extremely um, strict with their... You know, and, and a lot of that comes down to the training. Like in real life, we go through a lot of training, and you, you you learn when the right time is. There's also a lot more in-depth mission briefings. We, we're pretty uh, light on for the mission briefing. That there's no real ROE or anything like that. So it's all done on the fly, which I, I don't have a problem with that. But it's just one of those things that real life is done to say, a lot more depth. As a, if you can think of a really good mission briefing template, I can put that into the like framework. Um, some of my older missions had good ones. I don't know if you still got them. Uh, no, I think we wiped the server. Yeah, uh, we burned it all. <laughs> Could have another off. crack at it and see how it works and um, keep what sticks. And... On the mission that I just put out, uh, I put civilians in, as separate to friendly forces. I wouldn't mind seeing a few more missions with more civilians in them. See, I always loved yeah. doing that because I wanted people to have to have accountability yeah. and to not be able to just fire anything that moved yeah so i, I at least i handcuffed the civilians because civilians in armor have a tendency to just run in all directions like they don't follow waypoints like soldiers they just decide to run so what yeah, uh, <clears throat> so what are the other big immersion but i'll give you my my immersion oh. breaking bugbears what the, the things in the things in armor still that seem to ruin the flow for me. One, civilians just running all over the place. <laughs> That's a nightmare. Okay. It drives me wild. Um, two, the inability of my reasonably fit, although I appear to be fitter in real life than in game, um, soldier to walk into a building and then not be able to get out of anywhere other than the front door. I can't even climb through the big, open, expansive window. Yet you can fall through the floor. Yeah. So <laughs> using the staircase. <laughs> yeah, it's it's it, it's that kind of thing that yeah. frustrates me. I think that's a physics engine thing though. It's yeah. the engine they use for it. Yeah, no mod's gonna fix that. Yeah. Although there are a couple of climbing ones that I have seen, so I know this we we mustn't turn this into a mod's wish list. Ace thing, has but... no, no Ace has climbing. Yeah. If you hold so, shift and press mm -hmm. V you climb upwards. Okay. It's very specific that. about what you climb there. Yeah, it's very yeah. specific. There was a there was a get out of windows mod. I remember. I'm not sure if it was Laxman or someone like that. There's a few of the um, a few of the other things like instead of just being able to click and remove your uh, attachments to the rifle, there was a mount mod that he did. So it actually put you into an animation while you strip the part from. Yeah. The rifle. I'll, I like that. Think that's a nice one. Um, but again, the need, like, how often do we change attachments and weapons? Oh, not often. So yeah. that's why it wouldn't be too much of a bother. It's just more of a bother that we've got to put it onto the server. Yeah, it's just another another mod, really. Yeah. So we try to keep the mods as small as possible, so you can yeah. time to download them. As well as getting new members isn't easy when you're like, hey, download this mod list. But then again, some of the other um, groups that I've seen have massive mod lists. And some of the mods they've got, like, I've used them and taken a look at them in depth and just complete rubbish. I think one of the, the easiest ways possibly of being able to discern on which side of this sort of fence you lie is possibly in which of the HUDs that people use. Because we give people an option of, well, actually, they've got an option of no HUD. Um, the Shaktak HUD, <laughs> not recommended, generally annoying, or blue HUD. And I think those of us who have gone down the more of a I want it to be as immersive as possible I've gone blue hut because it's less See, less like, gaming I recommend Shaktak for people who are new because it puts up the people's compass. names no not yeah. the compass the names yep. well I've, I've only used Shaktak to this yeah. point and so I like find reason, it to be handy the reason I got rid of Shaktak is I didn't like the compass there <laughs> same and now I use Blue Hard. Blue Hard, all it shows you is the people in front of you. You can turn on the compass if you want. You can turn on eyes in the back of your head if you want. But really, I just have it because it doesn't show the compass. Or at least I get that option. Whereas Shack Pack, it's a static sort of HUD. 
but for new players, it's great if you don't know who you're playing with because it gives you the names of yeah. each of the players. But I yeah, don't I think... Uh... More mods equals more realism? No. No? Yes? No, not always. It depends on the mod, doesn't it? Well, yeah. really, like, if you're looking for realism, you're picking the realism mods. Like, right. You're not going to, like, use Ace 3, which is, yeah. like... Got but at LSD the same time, like, if you go adding all mods just because they add an element of realism, you you know, you potentially introduce bugs as there too, so... Yeah. Well, when we go to the other spectrum, like the complete other spectrum... Actually, no, it's the same one. So, <laughs> we were talking about those super realistic groups. So, what about those groups that emulate units as a whole? Um, yeah. Where I think authenticity is a big deal for that one, you to... Oh, I saw mm -hmm. one. I got an invite to a um, team speak. I took a look. And they've got a barracks... And then in the barracks, they've got a channel named after the staff sergeant of that channel. And the staff sergeant will manage eight privates in that channel. So when they get ready to play armor, they'll all go into each of their like little sub-barracks. So you have like a squad of eight, and they'll all know each other really, really well. And then the staff sergeants will talk to each other, but like the squads don't talk to each other at all. Unless they're like, you know, just not playing armor, I guess. Oh. I, I thought it was like, I was like, oh my god, this is so organised, how nice is this? But then again, in the sense that, yeah, this wouldn't be fun. It does break your community up into silos. Like, the yeah, good thing so about this the is... Yeah, the community splitting. You know, the there's, there's no one I've come across in this group that that isn't welcoming and accepting and, you know, hey, look, one big group, good atmosphere. Yeah. See, look, with, with us, though, I'm, I'm happy for us to maybe get into more assigned squads. If we had, like, a bunch mm -hmm. of regulars, and, and being in those... Those squads, whether we switch roles in that squad or not, but being in that assigned squad um, and get to know each other. Um, yeah. But yeah, segregating, like saying the staff side, only staff sergeants can talk together, I'm not keen for that. But that comes back to the point you were talking about before, as where if you put the training in and, and whatnot, yeah. basically what you're talking about is just putting smaller groups that you can train up either more yes. efficiently or not. But that's the yeah. other thing, we train for every role. Whereas right, I'm pretty yeah. sure over yeah. there, like, the machine gunner only plays machine gunner. Yep, for the most like, part, so far, from what I've here, seen. The only person who's stuck with one role is me playing medic until I teach other people ace through medical. Yeah, that's, it's not too um, unrealistic for, especially the, uh, in, the, in the Australian army. Like, we multi-role a lot. Like I said, I'm, I'm, a, I'm maybe a, a radio tech, but I'm a soldier first. So I, I know how to use machine guns, how to um, Fire rock drive, rock drive vehicles. Stuff. Well, I haven't done that those courses yet, but yeah, I've had the opportunity to do the, the demo, demos courses, so I could have done that sort of stuff, even though yeah, I'm a radio Because my person. mate, I think he's second year in the military now, he's basically a grunt, but he's done machine guns, rocket launchers, assault rifles, yeah, a bit of um, vehicle driving. No, military is a lot more multi-rolled, because we don't have the numbers in the forces to have that one specific role for one, uh, one specific person. Plus, I don't... Like, I mean, as much as I love playing Medic, I can't see people wanting to play the same role every single week. Yeah, well, you know, especially if you are just getting in, you like you don't know what role you want to be yeah. either, so... Plus with new guys, I always try to pair new guys up with members who are older. So that way they kind of get, like, a somebody who knows what they're doing, help them along. Oh, older in the community. Uh, yeah, older in the community, sorry. Right, right. No, older not just age. the seniors. <laughs> <laughs> You listen here, young laddie. <laughs> so, Kurt, as someone who's both. just joined, yeah, relatively, um, what do you find? Do you find a lot of the sort of name tag and identifiers useful? Because I've been here so long now that I kind of know how Paz moves, how Spanny yeah. moves, etc. I don't need names. I know who they are. Yeah, no, I definitely do still. I still I need them. <laughs> I still need them. I don't know what you're going about, Ash. Like, obviously, you know, I'm, what, probably three months down now, so the voices and stuff, I've started, I've, you know, I'd say I'm competent in the space where identifying who it is calling out by their voice, but um, there's still those little little moments where it's like, hang on, who is this behind me here? Especially if it's Johnny, because he doesn't say anything. Yeah, <laughs> I think it's Johnny. There's one thing I've done recently with um, Ace. Is Ace, yeah, I've um, turned off uh, names uh, just for the video recording. And um, yeah, I, I sometimes find it difficult to try and work out who's who. Except for Rick. I, mean, I know who Rick is by looking at him. I think that's just an armor thing where you can't really, like, 
pick people by their faces. Yeah. Well, that's why I insist on having the uh, the glasses. Yeah. Mm. Everyone keeping their glasses. That's how I de-esh a lot of the times. So I just see these. And yet I was mocked for it early on, but everyone now knows <laughs> the guy in the green glasses. Is there one that sounds like like two people that sound similar. very similar? Ah, the new guy that we got, um, not Swampy. Who was the other bloke? Uh, uh, Hawk. Hawk. Hawk sounds like yep. Zool. Yeah, he does. Like yeah. really, really sounds like Zool. But Zool doesn't play with us that much anymore. The well, one of the biggest openly things. racist always confuses the two English people. Yeah. Well, you can't blame him for that. Well, no, you both start with the letter E. That's why I confuse you. Well, uh, funny you should say that because as are an apex, I've always sort of between you two guys. Which one was it who said that? And I, like... and I used to mess up <laughs> between Spanny and Stills when I started out. It was the letters thing. I think I have a it very is. unique voice. You got foreign nice Actually, name. no, I do confuse you, Spanny, with someone else. I just can't at the moment remember oh, who it is. Okay. So much for that. Like purple. Yeah, maybe. Purple and Spanish sound a little bit sort of like in that. They it breathe the at the end of their words. That's probably the most obvious thing, actually, when you think about it in terms of immersion and realism, is people do not wander around with big floating things above their head. Right. Yeah. <laughs> but you get to know people in, in person a lot more by their body shape, mannerisms, all that sort of stuff. So. Yeah. And I, I can tell, I can tell Spanish. And I think Paz, just by the way they move, and Azar actually to a degree, in game they move a particular way. How do we um, move? Yeah. <laughs> yeah, it's no, very difficult no, to describe. I can. I can Spenny, understand what you're saying. Benny moves all the time. Benny does not stop playing. He's, he's a. Uh, actually, now you mention that, I think I yeah. noticed that. Yeah. I, uh, I don't it's, know why I do that actually. Yeah, like he's playing. You fidget. Yeah. It's like like you've had a lot of coffee and you're twitching on the couch. Kurt just smells yeah. like goat. Or you've yeah, been playing a lot of um, first-person action games, arcade games. That and I'm normally like... hiding behind you, Paz, because I'm about to get shot. Yeah, that's the other thing, Kurt. Like, sticks right up against you. <laughs> <laughs> well, yeah, well, not everyone. Just the good-looking boys. Ah, uh, thanks, Kurt. <laughs> uh, anyway, yes, moving on. Moving on. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, Sorry, guys. Awkward Awkward Sorry, guys. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> We let you on the podcast once, and this is what you do. <laughs> Don't adjust your sets. It was just an awkward pause. Come back. No, wait, 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 wait. Don't go. <laughs> yes, yeah, so realism. How about that realism? <laughs> Pretty realistic. Yeah. Oh, so is there anything else that anyone wants to um, throw into that? I reckon you should be able to take your clothes off, like, completely. <laughs> you, you can. You, now, come on. We know what you're getting to there. No, nah, seriously. It's... Like, the amount of survival games you can just drop trail completely and in armor the military simulator you gotta wear like fancy ass underpants that keep you like cool yet they breathe that's not the biggest concern that I have to be honest oh, okay. <laughs> I don't concern? see myself writing to Bohemia going Bohemia um, I find I myself see wanting Dong. to get well, naked no, no. <laughs> <laughs> well no they've also got to put in females like I'm not just gonna be like oh, yeah, yeah well dicks out everybody this all of a sudden it's the most heavily female populated force getting around yeah, that's, that's the other problem. <laughs> um, I wouldn't mind being able to like, change shirt or pants separately instead of being one whole uniform. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah it's like you're doing gorilla thing going. I armor dress-ups. Actually, yeah. as a, out yep. of all your time in the military, how many women have you seen like on the force? Lots. Lots? Work with many of them, yes. All right. I was, I I, I guess... They can do things too, Paz. Yeah. Oh, I'm I, I guess it's couldn't. more I was more wondering, the, seeing more as we the don't have a girl yeah. in our armor like, group. <laughs> It's more the core and trade I was in because I was uh, support support cores. Um, a lot of the females are in in those sort of roles, and um, not in the actual front line uh, infantry. Front line infantry, but they are allowed now. Yeah, if they want Brave to. New world. They can, and I've seen a few uh, artillery gunners who are women. Worked with a few, and nothing wrong with them. Everyone wants something to blow up. Yeah. Right. Well, I've oh, I've sorry. once played rugby against a side which included one female, and it was the most terrifying experience of my life. I wouldn't <laughs> want to be in an <laughs> army where I came across women on the other side. You don't know what to do. <laughs> but that was it. That there was, was a, very much it. I don't remember which ancient civilization it was, but they would have wailing women that would run on the battlefield to demoralize the like the other guys. What, like that could be my role. 
Yeah, Bro? they'd have like these wailing women that would run up in front of, like before the actual fighting started. I think. Yeah, these women that would just shriek and scream. God, that's quite. I don't know. I don't really feel fighting Greece? anymore. I don't know who it was. <laughs> well, we have Tanoa to look forward to, so maybe. Ooh. Mm. Possibly not. Actually, when is the release date for that? Next year sometime. Everybody got all hypey about it, and I was like, oh, a new map, and they're like, no, nah, it's not out for another year. I was like, oh. <laughs> well, that's going to be very interesting, because that's an environment that we've never really had before, supposedly. Um, Something I plan to use a lot. Yes, and that, I think, is possibly an environment they've steered clear of because of the immersiveness factor. It's very difficult, in my opinion, to do dense jungle with the life that should be there well in a video game. What do you mean? Like as in you're going to get your leg bitten off by mosquitoes? or? No, I'm just thinking that it's a kind of place where you've got graphically. It's difficult to Mm. convey that sense of claustrophobia. And then acoustically, you should be surrounded in the quiet points of the gunfight, as it were, by a lot of life. There should be noise everywhere. Well, I'm very interested moving forward to see what it's going to do to the AI. Yeah, I'm hoping no. AI realise that like you can't shoot through bushes. Like, can't see through bushes. Mm. Ah, well, I I think the Bohemia guys, because obviously the AI can see through trees and shit, they made it that bullet slightly ricochet off branches and like foliage. I don't know if that's the kind of like stop the AI being able to see so easily through trees. I think that would happen anyway, right? Yeah. Well, I don't know. I reckon a bullet could go through like leaves pretty all right. Yeah, for the first few hundred metres. Depends on the bullet, really, doesn't it? But you can shoot through bushes and you can tell the bullets are, like, um, being distorted in their trajectories. Whereas the AI's eyes are, like, dead trained on you. Yeah, I don't know how they're going to solve that. Mm. I think, Uh, I'm not sure how they use a ray cast to detect it, something similar. I'm not sure what kind of system they use. Yeah, no idea. Interesting to see how they fix it, Let's see if, um, another good one is the shrapnel. We haven't spoken about shrapnel yet. Tell us about shrapnel. Well, Ace adds shrapnel. It hurts. And it's the kind of shrapnel where if a bomb goes off two kilometers away and that one little piece of metal flies through the sky and hits you in the head, yeah, you're going down. Well, like, we're doing mortar practice firing on targets at about a thousand meters and I think one of the mortar shells went off and I heard like a ping off the house that I was standing next to. God. Like, you know, it was shrapnel. <laughs> you had a, an incident with that tonight, did you not, Azza, when we were shooting yeah. at the planes? Oh, no, no. That was, oh, yeah, that was the... You guys yeah. were, like, firing vertical and the back blast was burning yeah, your I'll, feet. No, it's shrapnel. Yeah. No, this was definitely shrapnel. No, no. Oh, yeah, it was too, the, when the so, jet went hit, down. Someone hit the jet from underneath, and I went out. Oh, no, it was a helicopter. Someone shot the helicopter. From, mm. And I was direct, standing directly underneath it, and I almost died. You know, and that was... um, But you never do anything properly. 800 metres away. (laughs) You know what? I'd love bullet casings. Like... Hang around? Yeah, I think there's a bit of a server load issue or a... Yeah, I suppose. You get someone like me playing and that's just going to crash. I just had that idea, like, of that episode of Generation Kill. Like, the helicopter's hovering above him and it gaddles the gun. And, like, he just gets covered in bullet shells. I'm I'm happy for that... um, Aspect not to be Ace, Ace realistic. Ace is looking at adding um, empty magazines, but it's hard coded into the game. When a magazine runs out of ammo, it gets automatically deleted. Because Ace, Ace has been pushing for like have like an ammo dump and an empty mag, and then you go refill your magazines rather than just throw them on the ground and get new ones. Yeah, Ace. it's it's another realistic issue that I don't really. I, I think see. <laughs> like Bohemia put that in is just to sort of reduce clutter. Yeah. Can I carry dead people yet? Yeah, you can. You can body bag them and um, drag but them. Can I? Can I? Do I have to body bag them still? Uh, I think one of the things dead, I'd still like to be able to do. You lose the option to carry and drag, but you can body bag, and then they, drag. They, that's what I still want to be able to do: is have it so that we've had some of our last stands, and you know we've just cleared enough time, and rather than just leave, Fanny's corpse lying there, we load him into a chopper and get him out of there. Good 30% of the missions I play and I make it out alive, Ash, I'll have you know. Yeah, I just picked you because <laughs> I was looking at your name at the time. I think it's interesting that you've and done the maths on that. And let's be honest, usually it's me. 
No, I think as the as the ranked new guy, I can put my hand up there. The red shirt. <laughs> Fair enough. Who actually survives the most? Well, all I know is Ash seems to be the one who carries me out. I must say, I've been doing all right. Pope? How'd Pope go? Does he usually... No, he usually crowd no, the doesn't usually... he? Pope's the first to die. Pope's the first down. <laughs> it's either Pope or me, usually, who gets I injured. Don't... I don't understand how Pope can get hit 36 times in a in a in a night and keep walking. Well, I'm a really good medic. Yeah. <laughs> Either that or you're just following him around. It's a really like good streak, but I don't know what happened to it. Got loads of morphine and epi in him, so he's got <laughs> uppers and downers, kind of like fighting each other. Stells is fairly uh, immune to death. Yeah, Stells is pretty good. Hopstar as well, if she survives. Ah, oh, no, nah, Hopstar get hit and get really cranky. <laughs> I get like a lot of messages like I'm down over here come pick me up and I'm like oh, I can't cheating. read that it's cheating or he gets hit by a boat oh yeah I hit him with a boat that was my bad up he, needs, he just needs to learn to use it we had a uh, pitch we... black night mission because Stills was like yeah let's do night ops and he wasn't actually there for the night ops so it was five minutes of boating in the dark where I couldn't see anything so I was relying on um, a flashlight we're and, still uh, sticking with the story it was an accident, Paz? Is that yeah, right? it was an accident. Oh, yeah, yeah, cool. yeah, yeah. We got up to the host, oh, sorry, the coastline. I killed the engine. Take the care boat of it. Bonked. Make it look like an accident. <laughs> <laughs> and the boat bonked Topster on the head, kind of like how you kill sharks in Far Cry 3 with a jet ski. Um, it went over oh, me it? as well, but I didn't get hit by the, the motor, I think. <laughs> yeah, that was a good example of, let's do this, it'll be great. And then the reality no, turns into... I knew it was going to be crap. Like, you don't want to play in the middle of the night, because you can't see. Like, I no, like I, seeing. I actually enjoyed it. Like, I wouldn't mind no, having another go of it. It was a great Pope. feel until we started, like, getting shot at, because you couldn't see anything. Either that, we do, like, on. night ops training before we do it again. I think, actually, you're right. That's something you have to prepare for, because it is so different. Yeah. It is in the recon spec, so... It was really dark, Spanny. Pitch black. Yeah, uh... And yeah, we didn't saying? have NVGs, we just had lights on the... Then you're yeah, gonna and, love this week's tech. And, and Azza had an IR laser, and no <laughs> NVGs. <laughs> <laughs> I was far too late and I didn't have a flashlight. Uh, a flashlight, not necessarily a good thing. I think I was wandering around and then went, I just need to check if my flashlight is working. Click, bang, bang, bang. Oh, yes, it's working and it's drawing attention. <laughs> and I couldn't get the chem lights to tie the shoulders. Pretty sure you can put them on vehicles, though. So that's, uh, that was our brief of Op Dune. Mm. Alright. I call it. Yeah, let's start wrapping up and getting tired. Now nearly. Right. To uni in the morning. So, unless we have any particularly urgent business for BTAC to discuss, I think everyone needs to make sure they've updated, was it, TF-47? Oh. Good, yeah. Um, TF-47. Quick mod check on that. We now have the small launcher. It comes in black and green variants, with the ammo loaded as part of the model. It looks a little bit long, but it, it'll do. Sorry, what did you say then? Black and green what? Black and green variants. Variants. Variants, variants I believe Thank you came for there, yeah. <laughs> You're having a bit of a special language day, aren't you, Paz? Hey, I'm Italian, I like pronounce the Esh, word. Esh, can you take him offline after this and just give him some English lessons? Well, <laughs> I can do, yes. Come Rain see, come in start. Spain falls mainly on the plane. I put these books in your heads. I think they'll help. I don't know. So anyway, you got the black and green variant. We'll be using the green one because we're part of like American framework, whatever. Um, it comes with a preloaded green round. You've got high explosive anti-armor and you've got high explosive dual purpose. And the best part about the small launcher is it has a spotting uh, spotting scope or spotting rifle or something like that. Spotting round. Uh, spotting round, that's the one. And you can load in spotting rounds and fire them off and they have the same trajectory as the barrel. Very cool indeed. Yes. And the pros of the small round, as per... I'll kill you. Tier 47 <laughs> the spotting round? No, no, yeah, the spotting round's hurt, but um, I'm just going to get his side up now, quickly. Because he has pros and cons. Like, the Moors launcher is going to move over to the AAF, because the colours match quite nicely. Green guys of the green launcher. So, the current... Um, so, the pros of the small is it's more damage against armour and higher penetration. It's a 600mm. Um, whereas the Moors is a 550mm. Uh, it's more precise zeroing, 50 to 100 meters. Uh, it's got a spotting rifle. Uh, pros of the Moors is a higher rocket velocity, higher zeroing range up to 900 meters, and lighter ammunition. So I had to give you guys bigger backpacks so you can still carry three rounds. Whereas with the Moors, you can carry three rounds quite easily. 
So yeah, that's mods. Yep. Uh, TTPs will be rolling, and people can write in on the forums and tell us exactly what it is they want to finish. Paz wants everyone to have a badge by the end of... Yeah, guys, get badges. ...sometime. Um, also, we are running out of profile pics to attach to these ear podcasts and whatnot, so send some stuff into me, uh, preferably, and I will take a picture of you staring at the back end of an animal, for example. <laughs> <laughs> Done. Is there anything else? I, I, think re I really need to start making videos again. Just got like a uni I, about. I will too. I need to concentrate on having some fun, as well as trying to make some money. Send us more emails. Spanny like, lost his shit when he read that one out. Oh. <laughs> Sorry, it's been so long before we actually got one, I wasn't sure we'd ever actually have a letter. I don't, it was just, oh, it was just supposed to be like the tip of the iceberg. You don't tell them it's the only one. We'll I mean, of the many that I picked, one this today. one was just too nice. I we couldn't hold it back. I wanted to at least pick 100 the best in the yet. bank before I started letting them go. We, we thank you, Sigri, and uh, send us more. Yeah, request something. Request, yes. In fact, hmm. we're going to try and get some kind of bumpers done with some kind of, I don't know, maybe sound effects and musical audio intro thingy. So... Maybe some suggestions on that. And if you speak good English, maybe we'll get you on here to talk about how armor's going in Europe, because I hear you guys are pretty hardcore. That would be an awesome... You want to play hardcore armor, you play with German guys, from what I've heard. They're usually pretty good with the hardcore stuff, but um, you want to leave it there? Hardcore armor, hard... oh, I'll stop myself, sorry. Uh, that, yes. was, that was going pretty unsavory. And he goes. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, I think that's a wrap, people.